In formal self-inquiry, which happens at the very beginning, we use a, a criteria, uh, you know, for reality, which is different in the East than it is in the West. In the West, we think, say things are real if we can touch them or feel them or anything that we can measure is real or physical, and then what we can't measure is metaphysical or beyond the physical. In, in, the, in the East, it's real if it doesn't move, change, come or go. What is always so, you know, that's what's real. Everything that comes and goes is phenomenal. So for the, with the test of reality, using that test for reality, we look back into ourselves and see what's real. Mm. Am I my body? Well, no, the body came and it went. And it's going, it hadn't gone yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, um, mm. And it goes, you know, am I with my thoughts? No, they're, they're very vaporous, you know, they're like, you know, clouds on the s in the sky or lightning in the night sky, you know, they c it comes and goes, there's no solid reality. So we look back until we find what doesn't move or doesn't change, and simply abide as that. And that's the, that's the self-inquiry. Okay. And it doesn't mean that anything changes on the surface or, you know, in, the, in this game that we're playing. It just means you're playing from a position of outside everything. And there's like a shift in consciousness which occurs in which what is real by the definition we just said, that which doesn't move is more important to us than the coming and going of stuff. Yet the coming and going still goes on according to our... So our what does it mean? Well, that's what you look and see. You know, you look in yourself. You know, you, I could say silence. It wouldn't I could be anything tangible. No. no. But thoughts aren't tangible either, are they? No. Yeah. So just right now, you can look. You know, what's prior to, you, you know, any concerns you have or thoughts you have or feelings you're having right now, sensations. So out of what are the thoughts arising? You know, you can see, you know, I mean, I've talked to people who, I say, have you ever had a moment that was thought free? And they say, no, if I wasn't thinking, I'd be asleep. You know, I said, wow, that's, that's interesting. But is it true? You know, if you really look, you'll see that you think in language, and language has punctuation marks, and there's, there's pauses between the thoughts. It's similar to the clouds going across the blue sky. In this analogy, uh, the blue sky is who you are, and the thoughts are sometimes so dense that you can't even see who you are because they're just so heavy and, and powerful. But at other times, uh, you can see between the clouds just a little bit of blue, and if you concentrate on that, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to finally find yourself. And of course, you're not looking up into the clouds, you're looking back into your own heart. And then thoughts are one way. Uh, there was a teacher called Francis Lucille who helped me immensely because I was still getting caught up in the thoughts and the importance of them. Um, and he said, Bob, he was, he was a French guy, he spoke, he sounded like Inspector Clouseau, but very, very intelligent. He worked for the French Atomic Energy Commission, gave that up and became a teacher. But what he said, he said, Bob, and we were at a satsang in, in Santa Barbara, he says, perhaps it's time for you to shift your, your inquiry to the level of sensation. And just watch your body and just watch out of where the sensations are arising. And that to me was just huge, you know, because all of a sudden the confusion went away and I could just watch the, con the sensations without labeling them. It's interesting, you know, what we call feelings are, are just a familiar set of sensations. These sensations, you know, like when you're, say you're angry, you know, maybe your throat will get tight and your muscles will tense up and your body temperature will change, you know, things you'll feel, you know, you'll get hot, another you know, under the collar, that's a, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so all these these sensations, when we when they're a familiar set of sensations, we 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 have a label for them. We call them anger, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. this one, or fear. Oh, I'm quaking, I'm quivering, I feel little. You know, when you're afraid, uh, that word, fear, anger, sadness, is the first word in the story we're going to tell ourselves about this set of sensations, mm -hmm. and this set of sensations. When they, but once, and once we get caught up in the story, we get confused about, about things, you know. It, it, it just really confuses the issue. And then we go back and forth, and it's like a storm. It'll go on in our heads and bodies until it just finally plays itself out.
I have a friend that said, this is the time for prayer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, when when you when the mind is just taking you away, there's a uh, the metaphor of the of the uh, horses that are pulling the chariot chariot in the Bhagavad Gita, and Arjuna is in the chariot, which is you or me, you know, and, and then we have Krishna, who's God, who we who the reason Arjuna was so effective in the battle was that he was able to. Uh, you know, let God drive the chariot, and he just shot the arrows, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and ba but basically, if you're, if you're trying to drive the chariot by yourselves, and the horses are all the senses. So if the oh, senses yeah. take off, you know, and you can't handle them, and you're struggling with the reins, you start praying for God to start driving the chariot again for you, <laughs> because you're not doing a very good job of it. So that's an interesting metaphor, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Um, most people who see Advaita Vedanta as a Advaita Vedanta, I should start pronouncing it correctly, uh, as a some kind of a philosophy, would say, "How can you bring God into the conversation? You know, because if, if it's really non-dual, then there is no God. There's just you." But this is all very paradoxical. You know, I don't think it's. It hurts me at all to talk about God. I used to. Used to. I used to be like mm -hmm. those guys, but I don't feel that way now. Yeah, yeah. you gotta call it something. Right. Yeah, we see the mind certainly <laughs> has to call it something. You know, they say God, Guru, and uh, and you know, we're all one. You know, it's all one. It's not. It's not two. Is mm -hmm. better way of saying. I don't like the all one because it's like perhaps one is one too many. If this is all just a dream. You know, it, there's the possibility that nothing is happening, really, except we're just, you know, in a dreamlike state, that we're dreaming this whole thing. And that well, that's something. Yeah, it's a possibility, you know. Mm. Yeah. So if you, if you say n not two, or, you know, or, n or not other, rather than mm. one and, and the same, it's uh, a little less assertive. In other words, it's not like trying to, uh, and there's less of a tendency to give up my old, my old, you know, imagined identity and then imagine a new, more ga grandiose identity for myself. Like, oh, I'm not Bob any longer. I never was Bob. I'm divine, you know, pristine, ineffable, peaceful consciousness. Well, it's just, that's just another really big set of labeling that the mind's doing in order to stay in charge. But if I be still, and be as I am, I really don't need to label myself. When you were asking your question earlier, you know, you know, what are you? You know, I can live my life as that question. But the practice, in answer to your earlier question, you know, is the sadhana or practice. It was a in the beginning. You do it. You do it with the ego. The ego is asked to look into its own self. It's a little bit like using a thorn. If you're out walking and you step on a thorn and you don't have any tools with you, you pick up another thorn in order to remove the thorn from your foot. So you use a part of the intellect to get this whole thing started. But once it starts, it's a little bit like pulling the string on a on a on a lawnmower. I guess they all have electric <laughs> starts now. And after you start pulling the string for a while, eventually the motor starts, and pretty soon the self-inquiry happens on its own. And you just, you, your, your life is, it's, there's this looking back into yourself, and it's like the whole expanse of, of everything is just being, is, is creating itself out of this looking. It's incredible. I'm sure, you know, if you, if you just stop thinking and don't pay so much attention to, the machinations inside your head and just watch, let the seeing just flow. It's quite wonderful. It's very peaceful.